Hey everyone, it's Chris Loud. Today I'm going on a little field trip to visit Kreuzer Gallery in Colorado Springs, Colorado to do a local art exhibit tour with gallery owner and curator Abby Kreuzer and artist Lisa Wallace-Dean. I'll leave links to both of their websites in the description so you can check out more amazing art. Hey! Hi! Good morning! You guys ready to look at some art? Sure. Yes. All right. Good morning, I'm Lisa Dean and welcome to the Kreuzer Gallery. I'm excited to share my work with you. Um, we're going to start over here with some linoleum block prints. Artists call these lino cuts, but that word sounds strange to other people. And um, these are works that I started about six years ago. Um, I had always taken pictures of old trees and roots and upturned roots, and I never thought that I was going to make art out of them. I actually was pretty much an abstract artist for most of my career. And then um, while I was teaching about printmaking, to a community college class, um, there was just this light bulb moment of, wow, that would be a great medium for the trees. And so I started using all these thousands of pictures that I've accumulated over the years and started doing linoleum block prints. So these are actually carvings and we call them linoleum block prints or lino cuts because they are carved into artist linoleum. Traditionally, this was done in wood. So they were wood block prints hundreds of years ago, but linoleum is a little bit easier to carve and a little more accessible in your art supply stores. And so that's why I started doing these in linoleum. Um, the tools are fabulous. They're these sharp pointy tools that you have to be very careful not to cut yourself with. Um, and yes, when you do printmaking, it is in reverse. So you have to always be thinking when I print this, it's the opposite. So if you try printmaking at home and you use text, uh, you really got to plan that. Use a mirror to put it on your, on your um, linoleum. So I started doing these and really found that I loved the intricacies. Um, at one point I even was thinking, wow, I want these to be as detailed as lace. Because of course I come from a family of crafters, quilt makers, lace makers. And so I was really kind of intrigued by, can I make these that detailed? Can I make them that beautiful? And so that's where this body of work began about six years ago. Um, one day, one of my sons said, Mom, wouldn't it be cool if you could do this really big? I was like, well, of course, but I don't have a big printmaking shop. I don't have an etching press. Um, and it would take forever. And, but I wanted more because I'm a painter. And so I started painting with this type of look. And that's what led to this work over here in the gallery. Um, the first piece I did was this one, and as you can see, there are really dark, opaque areas that would be the ink if it were a print. And so, um, luckily, um, one of our paint manufacturers, Golden, who makes acrylic paints, um, had just come out with a new type of paint called So Flat, and it allows that paint to be completely opaque, no light shining through. So I was able to use that to paint the dark areas that would have been what was inked on a print. And then I started doing layers of translucent glazes of acrylic paint to create this luminous feeling um, of light coming from behind. Got really excited about this technique and um, because it's not traditional painting technique, and I grew up in a time where everything in my art education was about, you have to do something new, you have to do something original. And so it was like, okay, here's my thing. And so I started doing these um, and was pretty excited and the response was good. So I continued this work. And as you can see now, I've got a pretty large body of work like this. Um, and as, as I've moved through them, the pieces have gotten more and more complex, kind of like the, the lino cuts. So we've got um, basically multiple layers here. First I start with a drawing, and then I paint in the areas that would have been inked if it were a print. Then I do washes of very transparent color. Then I paint the dark areas again because I need to see the interaction of the dark and the color. And then I do more layers of transparent color and that gets more and more detailed. And then I come in and I do 
another layer of the dark ink or dark paint so that it is finished with a really solid um, contrast between the dark opaque areas and the luminous colored areas. Um, so I'm pretty excited about this work and um, the response has been really quite excellent. Uh, I do have other pieces in this show though and that are not this technique. So I want to take you over here because um, what I've been describing to you is all very, very detailed work and it's work that takes a lot of concentration and time and steady hands. Um, it's hard to do that all the time. And so I generally have about three pieces going on in my studio at a time, but they're different types of work. So I usually have a linoleum block print, I'll have one of these paintings, and I do what I call my messy paintings too. Um, and most people look at these and don't think of them as messy paintings, but compared to the other work, they are. They're fast, um, I mean, well, fast. All my work takes several months, it's not fast, but <laughs> in comparison to those paintings, um, this type of work is much faster. There's still a lot of layers. I start with a monochromatic underpainting, then I put on layers of texture. Um, acrylic paints have all these kind of wonderful products available now to add texture to your paint. Um, and then I start painting over that with more color, add more texture, more color. So there's lots of layers that go into these paintings. Um, but that's why in this show at the Kreuzer Gallery, there are three different distinct techniques um, in the artwork that you'll see. Um, there's another thing that's going on here. If we move over this way, uh, I actually have four pieces in this show that are not nature and tree based. Um, and they're based off of my MRIs. And the reason I included these is because when I had my MRI done a couple of years ago, um, the images of the spine and the soft tissue looked so much like the roots of the trees and the trunks of the trees and all those gnarled branches that I just was like, I really want to work with this too. And so I started working with the MRI images and um, Chris, if you look over at this one, they actually end up looking incredibly organic very much similar to some of the, the organic material that we find in nature. And I just was kind of intrigued by that. Um, so that's part of why I included those, even though that for some people they might be a little bit of a departure from the tree imagery. And then over here there are some small linoleum block prints of actually some of the spinal imagery from the MRIs. Once again, in my mind, I was thinking of these as, as lace and as little doilies. And so I named these doilies. And I think most people didn't understand what that was. Um, but I wrapped them around the sides of these little blocks. And um, so they're kind, of, they're kind of as if they were laying on a little table. Um, so that's what those were about. So clearly you have inspiration from from nature and uh, MRIs <laughs> is there anything else that that uh, with your your body of work that inspires you well so it's interesting because all of the work we do comes from our own lives and from the environment that we live in and is in many ways our response our exchange with the world um, in terms of what we experience and what we want to create and what we are communicating to other people. And so um, typically artists write artist statements and um, mine for this show ended up being a poem, which is, is kind of, um, it might seem vague, but in, in many ways it's very revealing um, for me about this body of work because um, the work, the content of the work, the meaning of the work is really about, it's about our lives and it's about um, the complexity of life, of, of aging, of growth, of decay, of death, and, and also the beauty in it. And I think that's why I wanted 
I wanted color, not just the linoleum block prints. I wanted color and I wanted light and life to shine through those pieces. Um, so I think that's kind of how the work has evolved. And um, since you asked, I will read you the poem. I'm not a poet, okay? And you'll find that at the end because I, I actually, as a visual artist, I prefer to avoid words. Um, but this is it. Submerged in water, resurrected by light, compressed by impact, miraculously whole. Battered by wind, shriveled in the desert, rooted anchor exposed, reaching for the infinite, frequently grasping, always held, anxiety and depression, enlightenment coexist, mystical visions, emotional abundance, never a writer, people demand words. Metaphor versus reality, the burden of text, visions and wonders, truth in images. I think for those of us who are visual people, um, expressing ourselves through art is critical. It's so important to be able to um, express all those things that you can't put into words. And so for me, you know, um, of course, this is the culmination of my work so far. Um, and obviously things change and we grow and life changes and my work will change. Um, but I'm excited about this body of work. I feel really good about it. Thanks for visiting. Yeah, thank you so much, Lisa, for your sharing your inspirations and, and your process and especially the poem. That was wonderful. All right, thank Thanks. you, Chris. That was wonderful getting to spend time at Kreuzer Gallery with Abby and Lisa and getting to hear about Lisa's inspirations and process and just seeing some wonderful art. Remember that I have in the description links to Kreuzer Gallery and uh, Lisa's exhibit at Kreuzer Gallery as well as Lisa's website if you want to learn more about Lisa and the gallery and see some just fantastic art. If you like this, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, uh, leave me a note in the comments, even if you just say yes. Uh, let's me know to uh, maybe do some more field trips. And uh, otherwise, thanks for watching and keep on painting.